Hey, what's up guys? John here. Last year I sold my house in Los Angeles and I moved to Florida and I rented a place. I rented a place for 2,500 bucks a month. It was a really nice area and uh, I had no intentions of buying any house or really any real estate until I learned more about what's happening in the markets and kind of figured out where I was going to settle and all that. So I just rented. My landlord increased the rent from 2,500 bucks to $5,500, a massive, massive increase. And at that same time, I came across a very desperate seller who was anxious to unload their property. So much so that the price was, it was a, just an incredible, incredible deal. I ended up buying the property because of it. And I'm living there now. And so what I'm looking at though, is what's happening overall in every real estate market in the country. Where are the biggest bubbles? And I believe the biggest bubbles are gonna be Florida, where I am now, and Texas, but my cost basis on this property is so low that I don't really care. Now, I'm looking at this from like an unbiased perspective and looking solely on the economics and what's actually happening in these states and what I believe the future is gonna look like in both of these locations. Now, first, look at what's happening right now. We've all seen these headlines and people say, well, how does this really communicate with Texas and Florida? Well, we look at Beto O'Rourke, we'll start with Texas. Beto O'Rourke, you know, he's you know, doing one of those pictures, you know, they always do those pictures, and uh, taking a gun control has become a both political risk and a reward. Remember when uh, you know, Eric Garcetti was doing similar pictures, and they would, they would do these, and then they would say, you know, we need to take these movements, these actions, and then there would be a whole movement behind it. Well, this is radically different than, let's say, what Abbott is representative of. Right, Abbott is very pro-gun, pro, you know, that's, that's basically the traditional Texas mentality is, you know, self-defense, you know, having Second Amendment and, and all of that, right? That was a very, very big part, still kind of is a very big part of Texas, but with the situations and the problems that are unfolding, it's actually probably not gonna be a good thing for Abbott for a lot of the younger voters, right? And I think that we're gonna start to see people start to look at change in Texas uh, more now than we've ever seen in the past, right? And then what we're looking at here is Better Rourke unveils a plan to fight climate change, right? This was 2019, right? 2019, and now what we're looking at is 35% of the entire oil, oil and gas industry is, uh, is Texas economy, right? So they're gonna be going after the oil and gas industry, right? And so if this does happen, remember what Joe Biden said, when it comes to the gas price, we're gonna go through an incredible transition that we're gonna be taking, that's gonna be taking place, God willing, when it's over, we'll be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels when it's over. So we remember what Joe Biden said. We now know what Beta Rourke is pushing for. He's pushing for exactly what almost all the other politicians across America are pushing for. And so what does this mean? This means that there's going to likely be massive change coming to the state of Texas. Uh, very, very massive change. After we just had massive migration to Texas from other states, whether it be Los Angeles, California, I mean, all states basically saw uh, people leaving and going to places like Texas and Florida, right? That's where people were actually headed for that lifestyle, for no income tax, for you know free policies with business, uh, an open, open economy. That's what people were going for, right? And so because of that, we started to see everything just skyrocket, whether it be property taxes, which are getting out of control in Texas, property taxes are going up, and as property taxes are going up, rent is actually going up a whopping 30%, right? So in Texas, Austin recorded the highest increases on average for one bedroom from 30, up 30% 30 from February 2021 to 2022, right? So we're seeing rents go up, we're seeing property taxes go up, we are now also seeing staggering 25% price increases in, uh, in Dallas, right? And so we're seeing all of these increases and at the same exact time as we're seeing all these increases, property insurance is going up. So you look at the big picture here. If we have a big change politically in Texas, I'm not saying it's gonna happen with better work, but I'm saying if you have all the other governors, everyone else that's running, everyone's moving basically in the same direction all around the world, what are the odds that Florida and Texas do not follow suit? What are the odds? Really, if you look at every single country in the world, every big country, they're all saying the same buzzwords, the same keywords, right? They're all saying this. So I believe Texas is gonna take this change. So if you have all these people you know, that have just recently moved to Florida and Texas, thinking things are gonna you know, be perfect there in relation to where they just moved from, 
what are the odds that it's going to stay like that? I think it's very unlikely, right? That's what, I'm, that's what I believe. So I think that what we're going to see is rising property taxes, rising property insurance in Texas. We're likely going to see the oil and gas industry get devastated over the next five to 10 years. Uh, I think it's going to be a slow erosion of oil and gas jobs, right? And those jobs that fund 35% of the economy, that capital that funds the other small businesses and enterprises there, they're going to also see a massive loss, right? And so what I believe is going to happen as we see all these changes is we're going to see Texas change from what we've all thought and known of Texas. And it's going to become, you know, unlike anything that anyone would have formerly imagined that you know was born and raised in Texas. So I think Texas is going to be a very, very big bubble that's going to pop without question. Then what we're looking at is what's going on in Florida. You know, the political changes also taking place in Florida. They're trying to find people that are going to run against DeSantis. And I also think that this is going to play a very, very big role as we're here. We're hearing all about this, right? We're hearing all about this problem. But when we have you know, they, they have a stockpile of 100 million, right? So they have that stockpile of 100 million. If we have a situation, you know, let's just, if we have this situation that they're talking about here and they're talking about it all over the place, right? If this situation does unfold, people are gonna want more safety, right? And so if they're gonna want more safety, they're gonna take that to the voting booth, right? And they're gonna demand it. There's gonna be more of a change that's gonna be forced on these economies, Texas and Florida, no doubt about it. And so if that happens, right? that happens, what happens to Florida? Well, we also look at what's going on with the home insurance situation in Florida. They come out with this Senate Bill 2D, which is uh, two billion was allocated to reinsurance fund. Reinsurance can help homeowners insurance share risk, which lessens the likelihood that any company will be insolvent. We've also seen a lot of people, a lot of companies leaving, stuck in the water, how Florida's insurance companies going under leaves buyers out to dry. So they're trying to do all these different things to try to keep people in Florida, keep these companies in Florida. 150 million was allocated to My Safe Florida Home Program. This money will be used to form grants in Florida. Homeowner insurance can use to strengthen their homes against hurricane damage, right? Homeowners insurance companies will be required to provide more transparency in the claims denial process, meaning that consumers will have access to more in-depth explanations or total or partial claim denials. Home insurance companies will be prohibited from denying policies solely due to the age of a home's roof, but only if a roof is fewer than 15 years old in five years, right? So there's new restrictions, new policies. These things are going to be coming into Florida. These insurance companies are going to say, hey, cost of labor is going up. There's a ton of these uh, roofing scams and all these scams happening in Florida. And we have these, you know, we have these very, very big uh, financial impacts that happen with hurricanes and, you know, with, with what's going on, right? So if we have these situations where there's massive payouts and you know people just simply can't afford it, they're gonna take more risk off the table and move out of Florida. That's what's happening. And so look at this situation here. This, this guy right here says, Orlando, Florida, Mike McKee, insurance company canceled his policy in 2021. He paid thousands of dollars to install a metal roof on his house near downtown. One, it would last longer. Two, it would last longer. Three, it would last longer. However, he didn't end up saving as much money as he first thought he would. Insurance companies that I that I that were still going to charge three times as much as I had paid two years ago. So about three grand a month. Three grand a month. To put that in perspective, you can get a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage or five hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, thirty year fixed rate at today's rates for about three grand a month. Right. So that's how that's his insurance. He ended up securing coverage with citizens, typically the last resort when homeowners can't find insurance in the private marketplace. Not only is our home insurance options limited or pricey due to fewer insurance companies operating in Florida compared to even a few years ago for a variety of reasons like reinsurance or roof replacement costs. But policyholders across the state are now embracing to pay more to cover insurers that were forced into liquidation, right? So then what we're looking at is rents increasing, a whopping 52%. And, you know, in, we have about 38% in Tampa and about 57% increases in South Florida, like, you know, Miami Beach. And, you know, probably somewhere between 30 and 40% increases in Boca, West Palm Beach, Delray, those prime areas, right? So everything's going up and so property taxes, right? So rising property taxes are going to be going up as well. So we got some good things though. Texas and Florida are homestead states. So if you buy a property there, you know, you have some type of cap on your on your residence, 
uh, in terms of how much property taxes can go up every single year. But we still have this issue with cost of living skyrocketing, gas prices skyrocketing, right? Inflation really bringing people to a place of uh, more of a defensive nature. And so as this all happens, I believe what we're gonna start to see is people really watch their spending. And so they're gonna be watching it through their insurance costs and through you know what's going on in terms of their day-to-day -day expenses. So I believe what we're likely gonna see in Texas and in Florida, very, it's unfortunate, right? I, I'm not advocating for any type of a change, but what we are gonna see is these states change greatly over the next couple of years. Most likely, most likely. If we just look at, you know, everything happening in the world, what are the odds, right? Just practically, not, you know, I, I heard a very, very smart person say this one time, smart people see things for how they really are, everyone else sees things for how they want them to be. You know, how they really are is the entire world is changing. The entire world, every single city, state, and country, for the most part, is moving in a direction. Florida and Texas, I believe, are not going to be the only two anchors that are not going to move in this direction, right? So if that does happen, and let's say all these new bills start coming in, the state starts changing, why would people spend 40% more per month in rent, right? Why would they do this when they could just go to another state? Right? They will. They'll likely leave and they'll go to another state. People in New York and California that moved here, they may moved here because they bought a dream and they made an emotional decision for the most part. And so if they made this emotional decision, what we're likely going to see, as we've already seen and New York Post has been talking about this, people are going back to where they initially moved from. So we're going to see all these changes. There's no doubt about it. And as that happens and rents start to pull back, what happens to the landlords? The landlords that bought these properties over the last 10 years, what do they do? They hike the rents, right? They hike the rents up, and most of, most of these landlords pulled money out of their buildings to buy other buildings. And they did this refinance, buy, refinance, buy, refinance, buy. Well, if rents are dropping and more problems start coming and vacancies start increasing, these landlords are gonna be in big, big trouble, right? They're gonna be in very, very big trouble. Look at the property owners in Texas and Florida that overpaid for these properties. They're gonna be underwater on their properties. So when, we, when we're looking at the overall economy, the biggest states that I see that are gonna be facing trouble is gonna be Texas and Florida. Unfortunately, unfortunately. But if you want you know, the, the truth, that's what it is. Texas and Florida, I think, are gonna be the, the two biggest uh, emotionally driven real estate markets in the country that were formed over the last two years. And I think we're gonna see the air get deflated from these, uh, from these bubbles. What do you think about this entire situation? Watch this video. I'm gonna pin right here on exactly what's happening with property insurance in Florida. Because if insurance companies are really pulling out of Florida, then lenders aren't gonna lend there. And if lenders aren't gonna lend there because their loan isn't gonna be protected against an insurance policy, then what is this likely gonna to do to all future buyers trying to enter the market? They're either gonna to have to be all cash or they're not gonna enter, right? They're gonna to have to self-insure, meaning all cash purchases in Florida. Am I saying that's gonna happen? right now? No, but I'm saying it's going to get harder and harder and harder to get insurance as time progresses. What do you think about this entire situation? Drop below, hit the like button, subscribe, or else subscribe to my second channel. If you want to learn about real estate, personal finance, you know, on with bi-weekly phone calls with me, you need help with your credit, you want to invest in property when things hit the fan, you want to make money online, go to cashnow.video. Subscribe to my second channel. It's going to be an interactive show and a podcast starting this upcoming week. Also LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, everything's in the banner. Catch you guys later.